You may recall one additional derivative rule back from single variable calculus besides the ones that we have already learned. This one had to do with inverses and reciprocals. If we go back to single variable calculus, function f, one input, one output, if it has an inverse, then the derivative of the inverse of f is 1 over the derivative of f. Now, you got to be careful, of course, if that derivative ever goes to 0, then you got a problem. But this does make sense if you even think about it graphically. Look at the graph of f. Consider the derivative at a point as being a slope. Then, what's the relationship to the inverse? Well, the inverse graph is flipped about the diagonal, where the input equals the output. That exchanges the roles of inputs and outputs, and indeed, the slope certainly matches up. Now, this, um, this rule was simply the chain rule, like everything else. But because it was the chain rule, one has to be really careful about where you evaluate those derivatives. OK, so with that in mind, what do we do now in the multivariate case? Well, inverse functions make sense if you have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, but it's not so easy to visualize or draw pictures. So let's review what it means to, to be an inverse. And in the multivariate context, it's the same thing. The inverse undoes the function. So if f has n inputs and n outputs, then an inverse for f is a function that when you compose it with f, you get the identity. So f inverse of f of x equals x for all x, and f of f inverse of u equals u for all u. It doesn't matter which way you do that composition. You have to get the identity function back for all possible inputs. Okay, um, simple example. Let's consider a linear function f of x equals a times x, where a is a square matrix. What would the inverse of this be? You might guess that it's um, using the inverse matrix, that f inverse of u is a inverse times u. How do you know that that guess is correct? Simply follow the definition. Compose these two together both ways, that a and a inverse are going to combine to give you the identity. Now, you know that the inverse of a matrix doesn't always exist. And in general, the inverse of a function does not always exist. And even if it does, it might be really difficult to compute. Consider the nonlinear function f of x and y gives you y plus x cosine y cubed and e to the x minus y plus x times y. OK, what's the inverse of that? How do you undo this function? You may have learned tricks back in pre-calculus for, oh, just swap x and y and then move things around. No, no, that does not work here. Computing the inverse of a nonlinear function is genuinely difficult. So how do we make sense of inverses? Hmm.